Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Well, hey, our sponsor for today is Theme Park Concierges. You know, we've got a lot of people that are coming to Disney over the holidays. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people in the parks. The only way that you can really experience it at its finest is if you hire somebody from theme park concierge is Ramon and his team of people will take you all around the parks. You can do a full day, you can do a half day, and uh, they're going to take such good care of you. They're going to make sure that you get uh, all the rides in that you want to get in. They're going to make sure you get to your, your meals. They're going to make sure your fast passes are taken care of. They are incredible. They can be reached at uh, themeparkconcierges.com. They can be a phone call at 407-257-9973. You can also find them over on Facebook, facebook.com slash Ramon VIP Concierge. And if you uh, need to reach out to them through email, you can always email them at Ramon at Theme Park Concierges. Now, here's what they've done. If you are a listener to the Disney Parks podcast, you can um, go ahead and book your, your space with Theme Park Concierge. Just let them know, hey, I, I have found out about you guys from a Disney Parks podcast. They're going to save you 10% on your already ridiculously low price for a half day or a full day of concierge service around not only Walt Disney World, Universal Parks, SeaWorld, also out west at Disneyland. They've got you covered. ThemeParkConcierges.com. And now, the Disney Parks Podcast infotainment segment. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast. My name is Park Hopper John. I come to you from www.parkhoppers.com. Joining me as always, my co-host is with the most is Mr. Tony Casanova on the other side of the internet. He's from Disney Parks, uh, Disney by the numbers. Sorry, buddy. Disney by the numbers.com. It's late in the day, guys. You have no idea. Uh, how you doing tonight? As I flub through the opening. <laughs> <laughs> Round two, ding, ding. <laughs> Round two, ding, ding. Hey, uh, funny thing, for those of you who are listening or if you're watching, uh, Wednesdays, I actually record another podcast, which uh, is on uh, another subject and features craft beer in every episode. And one of the guys is going out of town. So not only did I fly in after getting up at 4 a.m. and flying in from Cleveland, Ohio, I went directly and recorded three shows back to back to back to back with beer. (laughs) I came home, I slept for an hour and got up. And if we've been recording all night, so wow. I'm, a little, I'm, a little, I'm a little stupid at this point right now. I'm not even sure what my name is. Uh, so call me Lou Mangello. I don't care. Um, and just we're call me so Ricky. glad. <laughs> if you like the show, Ricky. my name is Tony. If you don't like the show, my name is Ricky. That's right. Ricky, don't lose my number. Uh, if uh, We are so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy day to listen to a couple knuckleheads talk. And we have a phenomenal show for you because we're talking about the top 10 ways to enjoy the holidays at Walt Disney World. I think I love Halloween, but Walt Disney World is the place to be for the holiday season. Would you agree? I agree. And even this list or a good majority of this list could apply to Disneyland too so just don't you know don't just uh you know take to a point yeah there's there's a lot of things on this that still can be uh enjoyed at at disneyland as well absolutely there are certain specific things and and, you know once we say what they are you'll probably know them but um why don't we go ahead and get started buddy let's go ahead and crank into it all right number 10 10 number 10 10 10 10 enjoy the decorations at walt disney world now listen I think I still have them up. But if you go to DisneyMyTheNumbers.com, there is a lot of decorations that Disney puts up. They are not 
cheap on the decorations. Stingy is the word you're looking for. Yeah. Not stingy. Yeah, they're not stingy on their Christmas decorations. There is a tree in every resort. There is a tree in almost every store. There are all lights on everything that doesn't move or is not bolted down. They put lights and, and, and the music is piped in. The garland is all over the place. There's wreaths everywhere. It is really done from head to toe. I really think they put up more decorations for Christmas than they do Halloween. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. much more universal, if I can use that word, talking about Disney. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's much more universal through the parks. Like you, It doesn't matter if you're going to the All-Star Resorts or if you're mm-hmm. going to the Pop or if you're going to the Grand Floridian. Yeah. They're going to have – resort themed uh holiday decorations so you know the grand floridian is going to definitely have that upscale florida feel uh we're going to talk about a couple things they do specifically there but it's going to be very upscale if you go to you know the uh animal kingdom lodge you're going to see much more african influenced trees if you go to uh wilderness lodge you know you're going to see uh things are influenced from out west it's it's a great time, and this is not even talking about the theme parks. And I think, even though it's a half day park right now, as much you know, as much as we give it crap, Hollywood Studios is my favorite park to go to. Out, you know, Magic Kingdom, of course, but yeah. after that, it's Hollywood Studios because mm-hmm. I love the feel, I love the neon, yeah, I love the way they decorate it. I, yeah, it's killing me that this year they're not doing the Osborne, Osborne lights, but yeah. but it's still going to be worth it to go see. You know, the dancing candy candy cane things yeah. and. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole team. There's a whole team of people that work in uh, this building called Holiday Services uh, behind the Magic Kingdom. Uh, I believe they use about 14 tractor trailers uh, to move all the Christmas stuff from uh, the Holiday Services building. You know, so when they're going to do the Magic Kingdom, they may you know run out two, three tractor trailers of uh, uh, things. I'll tell you another thing to do. Uh, you want to do it before the holidays, before they get their Christmas decorations out. Try and take the holiday services uh, tour. They give a tour of this building. You'll learn everything you ever wanted to know about Christmas decorating uh, from some experts. Uh, they give you some really great ideas, and then they tell you how they do this uh, night after night, You know, rolling out this, this, this rolling truckloads of, of stuff. They have a whole right. team, whole installation team. They have a whole maintenance team. It's a really a, it is a full on production, and it's a lot of fun to see, you know, the parks slowly transform, you know, one resort after another. Yeah, it's all done at night. It's not yeah. all right. Ninety point ninety nine point nine percent of it is done at night. There are some things that get done during the day, uh, like the crane has been out since August to put all the Christmas lights on on the castle. So. Yeah. And, you know, if you're lucky enough to be at one of the larger resorts over the the week where the f- November 1st yeah. through like the 7th, 8th of November, you realize that they do the Halloween show like Halloween night, which is the 31st. Yeah. Right. And then they do the first Christmas show. What? Like November 7th. November 7th. So, yeah. you know, Magic Kingdom gets changed almost like that. But then yeah. you, you start watching the resorts. I know people, I have friends who book their vacations every year to come and sit. And what they do is they, they do their days in the park. And then what they do is they get a bunch of coffee and they just sit and watch the, the guys put the stuff up yeah. in the resorts. Yeah. And it's interesting, those big trees in the resorts, they put, uh, they do it from the top down, not from the bottom up. Yeah, it's crazy how they do that. Yeah, it's very, very weird. <laughs> oh, well, number, I, 10, number 10 on the list is one of my favorite things to do, and it's going to sound kind of crazy, so you just kind of go with me on it. Um, Disney's Fort Wilderness is, and campgrounds is, you know, they've got the cabins, but a majority of that is legit campgrounds. So people take uh, camper trailers and all sorts of stuff. And an interesting phenomenon happens during the Halloween season. Uh, inflatable, uh, spooky things are, are uh, inflate around the, the tr- campers and stuff. But at the holiday season, during Christmas time, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Excuse me, I had a hiccup. It's unbelievable what they do. So if you wanted to do so- 
excuse me, out of the hiccups, please forgive me. If you wanted to do something really, really unique that you really can't do very many places around the world, uh, go have an early dinner somewhere and then pile the family in your car and go into uh, Disney's Fort Wilderness and just drive around the campsites. Uh, it's really easy how to get there. It's pretty simple. They not only have amazing Christmas decorations, some of them go so far as to have like Christmas trails around their their campers. And then on selected nights, the people who are staying there kind of do their own little Christmas parade. Yep. Because, you know, a lot of people rent or bring golf carts, so they deck the golf carts out. Excuse me, they deck the golf carts out. And then they they pile together and they do a little parade through the entire wilderness, uh, Fort Wilderness Campgrounds area. It's it's crazy, but it's so much fun. And it's, it's free, which is not many things that you can do right. Right. that's free. But it's it's a lot of fun to go check that out. So touring through Disney's Fort Wilderness is something that yeah. you could – Really and some families do this year after year. Some of them even rent two and three campsites. Yeah. One to put their camp on and another two to decorate. There, there, there's yeah. nothing on there but Christmas decorations. I saw one. This guy had a whole monorail and train. He had all the, you know, the action playset things. He had, you know, Epcot, the buildings. The He had every hotel. I don't know how he collected it all. There's that one that you – it's the trail and you go all the way around the camper. Yeah. They probably had several thousands of dollars worth of products, merchandise from the parks yeah. of the years. I really hope some of that stuff is nailed down because – Yeah, I do I, too. I always know, I, get worried about that stuff. Yeah, yeah but it's it's a lot of fun. And and if you can't – you know, um, I really don't know if I'm, I can go there. I'm, I'm certainly not going to be able to find it. Sure you will. If it's at night, just yeah. look for the glowing blow up yeah. Santa glowing camp Mickey's. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good fun thing to do. You can rent. Uh, I don't think you could drive around, but you can rent a golf cart and drive around, or you yeah, can just you, walk. You can drive around. Can you drive your yeah. car? Mm-hmm. Well, right. How do you think they get the campers back there? I didn't think you'd go back there unless you had were going to a campsite in your car. Yeah. I can neither confirm nor deny how you get on property. Okay. okay. All right. Get that. All right. You heard it here. All right. Uh, number eight is uh, gingerbread. Gingerbread, 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 and lots and lots and lots of gingerbread. I know for a fact the Grand Floridian starts breaking their gingerbread for the gingerbread house in August. They need because to. that's how much gingerbread they need. <laughs> So uh, a lot of the resorts, a lot of the deluxe resorts, have huge gingerbread displays. Uh, the Grand Floridian does a whole house. Right. Now, obviously, it's uh, made all of gingerbread. There's some wood underneath, and they put all the gingerbread up on the wood, obviously, uh, because they sell gingerbread houses from the gingerbread house. Right. As, <laughs> as crazy as that is. Uh, the they, contemporary does a Christmas tree uh, of gingerbread, so there is a lot of gingerbread. Now, here's yeah. another. Go ahead. Well, and don't forget, if you if you go to uh, the Boardwalk Resorts, the Boardwalk has yes, the gingerbread the, Yeah, that's where the Stitch thing went to. Is mm-hmm. in the um, the Boardwalk Resort. At least it was last year. Over at the Yacht Club. Uh, excuse me, the beach club is where they have the big carousel and another place you can get gingerbread. And then if you want to walk over to the Swan and the Dolphin, both of those resorts have their own deal. Like the Swan every year has like a giant chocolate display. It's usually a scene with Santa. Mm -hmm. And then the Dolphin has a ginormous Christmas tree and trains running around and stilt walkers. It's, It's pretty insane. So if you can get onto one of those pieces of property, and you can just walk around and spend the entire evening checking out those resorts. That's yeah. tons of fun and free. Okay. Now, here's something we'll have to test on our Christmas call. Something I was told last year. Uh, I think it was at the Contemporary. I'm not a fan of gingerbread. I don't you know, particularly like to eat gingerbread. But I've heard this, and this was told to me by a cast member, that the gingerbread that's sold at the Contemporary is different than the gingerbread that's sold at the Grand Floridian. The gingerbread that's sold at the Grand Floridian 
has an old spicy gingerbread flavor profile than the gingerbread that's all the contemporary. It's got more of a new kind of contemporary ish uh, uh, flavor profile that differs from the one that is at the Grand Floridian. I do know for a fact that the ones at the Grand Floridian are harder cookies. And mm-hmm. I know the ones at the contemporary are softer mm-hmm. and thusly more enjoyable to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 So if you're looking for gingerbread, uh, I could tell you for a fact, Disneyland or Disney World, uh, both places do a big gingerbread thing. Um, you can find a lot of gingerbread. If that's your <laughs> that, if that's your flavor profile that you love uh, around the holidays, then uh it's certainly in abundance at uh, yeah. the, at the resorts. If that's your Christmas crack of choice, yeah, then Disney has you covered. Yeah. And there's different places in the park that has some gingerbread, but it's mm-hmm. not the same type of thing. You can right. get it in the park too. Okay, so number seven. If you listen to this past week's show, we talked about it, and I think we talked about it in weeks coming up, leading up to it. But one of the best things that you could do for the holidays is to visit. Mickey's very merry Christmas party. Now this is a separate hard ticketed event. It's basically somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to 80 bucks, somewhere in that neighborhood, depending on a, if you're a Florida resident, B, if you're a pass holder, uh, DVC, you know, there's, there's different tiers of payment, yeah. but what that does is that guarantees you entrance to the Mickey's very merry Christmas party. And what you can do, and we talk about this every year, uh, you can enter the party uh, starting at four o'clock in the afternoon, the party actually starts at seven. You can get into the park at four, run around, ride a bunch of rides, have a great time at seven o'clock. They start getting all the day guests out. And then you have the entire park to yourself uh, to celebrate Christmas. Main Street USA offers snow. It snows. And there's all sorts of really cool things to do. Um, they have a special Christmas parade. They have a special fireworks show. They have a special stage show. All of the Disney characters uh, are there uh, for photo opportunities in their uh, Christmas holiday finest. Uh, obviously, you've got rides, but, you know, like at Halloween, they do trick-or-treating. At Christmas, they have free cookies and hot cocoa. They also have, you know, healthy options like, you know, juice and apples or something. Um, they have healthier options for that as well. But this is probably it's of the two. It's the two greatest things every year, the Halloween party and the Christmas party. Yeah. Uh, Two big events. All right. Number six on the list. And we kind of spoke about uh, this a little bit in our new show uh, earlier this week is the candlelight processional. Uh, You can find uh, all the different presenters that are going from Neil Patrick Harris to Jody Benson. Uh, You can find out the dates that are going to be there. Uh, But there's more. There is various ways that you can uh, get into see this event. One is, first of all, it's free. So it's included with your Epcot admission. Uh, all you have to do is go at the designated time for the event, and that's it. That's it. All you have to do. But let me tell you this. Some of these get very crowded, very full. So you can just wait in line. There's a standby line. Uh, for each show, uh, lines up usually on the east side of the stage. Uh, and this is subject to change because Disney likes to change things up. Usually the standby is on the east side. If you're facing the stage, it's on the east side of the stage. Uh, you'll see a whole corral over there that you can uh, wait in line and see the show. The other thing you do is buy yourself a, a lunch or dinner package, and then that will guarantee you a seat. And that standby line is on the west side of the stage. So first you'll buy your – you have to go online. Uh, You can buy it online or you could do it by calling um, www407-WDW-DINE. They have lunch and dinner packages at almost every restaurant in Epcot. Uh, I'm looking at this list, and I really don't see any restaurant that's not on the list. I think every restaurant in World Showcase is on this list. So, uh, and even some of the other restaurants that are not in World Showcase are on this list. So you really can do it. Now, you have to buy lunch or dinner. Uh, it has a, a, it's a price fixed meal. So you'll get, you know, an appetizer, an entree, and probably dessert. Uh, and it's at a fixed price. And then that will guarantee you a seat. Uh, but there's also a line for that. You probably want to get to that early too, because 
maybe you want to, you know, sit in the center. You want to sit in the middle. You, you know, whatever. You may have a preference of where you want to sit to see the show. So, you know, I would suggest getting there a little bit early. But you are guaranteed a seat in a specific area uh, for the show, show. And I think that's typically been in the second uh, area, uh, not the first closest to the stage, but in the area just back from that in the center. Has it not, John? Mm-hmm. Or, uh, yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're pretty right. You don't get, like, right up on the stage, but you get really close. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, listen, if you want a guaranteed seat, that's the way to do it. Uh, for a lot of these or some of these people, you could probably just show up maybe a half, an hour ahead of time, stand in the back, just wait or get in the standby line. And, and you really don't have a bad view. If you could see the stage, you can see the show. You know, it's not a very big place. Uh, it is in the back of the park. It's right by American Adventure. So, and, and these people tell the story. Uh, you know, there are you know, people like Jody Benson and Neil Patrick Harris. There is a whole cast, usually uh, a whole choir in the back. Uh, part of it is cast members, and part of it is um, uh, kids that they bring in from different schools, uh, different local schools to do some of the singing. Um, but I think a, a large majority of it is cast members, and uh, a lot of those people, too, are the Voices of Liberty. So you are getting a, a premium performance. It's right. not just, you know, and this, cast and members this, that don't know how to sing. Yeah, and this is a celebrity narrator reads the story of Christmas, the right. meaning the birth of Christ, and 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 his story accompanied with music from a full orchestra and choir and voices of liberty. It's, it really is, you know, I, I we, certainly we don't want to get into a religious conversation here, but if you are not easily offended by certain things, this is a very moving experience. The music is amazing. Uh, it's great to see the celebrity narrators and it's just, it's a great, it's a great family experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's a really good show. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Uh, if you're in Epcot, I highly recommend that you, you pop in and, and you at least see some of it uh, and then make your decision from there. And then maybe the next night you, uh, you could buy a package. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, and speaking of packages, uh, number five on the list is Minnie's Christmas Dinner at Hollywood and Vine. Um, Disney has done a great job of really utilizing this space at Hollywood and Vine. Now, Hollywood and Vine is a restaurant that's it's been at Hollywood Studios forever. It's a buffet, but what they do is is during certain times of year they really theme it out well. Like for Star Wars, they had all of the uh, the characters. It's a character dinner. So all the characters there were dressed as in Star Wars apparel. And I'm glad we did that. I'm glad Sid and I did that because they're not doing the Star Wars characters anymore. So the pictures that we got were the last ones that we'll ever get. Uh, Oscars, uh, they've also done a Halloween version. And now they're doing Minnie's Christmas dinner. So all of the characters are probably going to be dressed up in their Halloween or excuse me, their Christmas outfits or something like that. Uh, and, and you come in, you have a great dinner. Uh, it's buffet style. It's all you care to enjoy. Uh, drinks are included. Non-alcoholic drinks, I should say, are included. Uh, the dessert bars are amazing. The food is, is awesome. And then periodically throughout your meal, you feel a little tap on the shoulder and uh, you're probably going to get a picture with Daisy Donald, Minnie, uh, right as you walk in, you'll probably get your picture with Mickey and Minnie. They usually don't have Mickey walking around very often, but uh, it's not that expensive. It's probably in the $35 to $45 range for a meal uh, per person, per adult. It's a little cheaper for kids, uh, nine and under. Totally worth it. It's a great opportunity to get great pictures. It's a great meal. Uh, it's a nice way to celebrate the season. And, you know, depending on if you want to do, you know, uh, what we're going to talk about, uh, next, or if you want to try to get in Fantasmic, it's just a great way to be in the park and celebrate the season. Yep. And number four on the list is the new show this year. And uh, what was it? Jingle, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam. Uh, this is a. <laughs> this Brought is to you a, by Emeril Lagazzi. Yeah. This is a new uh, show over at the uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. So this is going to take the place of our Star Wars beloved show, which. I would think it's the best thing they've done in a long yeah, time at a, totally. at a theme park. Totally. Uh, so really they're going to have to make this thing really good because I'll be mad. 
uh, that you took Star Wars away because I thought that thing is the best thing. So anyway, they'll project stuff on, uh, what is that? The Great Movie Ride. Couldn't think of it for a second. Project onto the Great Movie Ride, much like they do uh, Cinderella's Castle. And then fireworks will ensue above that and it'll all be nice uh, Christmas holiday music. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll still use the laser lights and the fire and all that other stuff. Uh, you know, all the other accoutrements that they put in for this, you know, the Star Wars show. I'm sure they'll try and utilize as much of those show elements uh, in the jingle bell, jingle bam show. Right. Uh, so I'm I'm putting it on the list because I think it's something that's going to be a lot of fun to see this year. Absolutely. Uh, why don't you take number three? Because that's more near and dear to your heart. You probably have much more information about that. Yeah. So uh, for DVC members, there are some uh, Christmas dinners that they do on, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then New Year's Day, not New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve is a little tight. Uh, you'll have to call member services. Uh, and these are usually, you know, really nice uh, buffets uh, that you and the family can enjoy. They're a little on the pricey side. I think it was like $70 for an adult, something like that, which is a lot of food. If you think about it, are you going to eat $70 worth of food? I don't know. I, I really don't. I really don't think anybody's going to eat $70 worth of food. But uh, they are buffets. Uh, and, you know, if you are in Disney World, obviously – you you could go off property and go to a restaurant, but uh, these dinners kind of help you, you know, to stay on property and, and, and enjoy it. Um, they usually, uh, most of them are at the Contemporary uh, over in the Contemporary Convention Center. So just call up member services if you're a DVC member and find out uh, what dinners and where they are. And uh, if they're, even if they're still available, they may be all gone by now. So, And as we like to say, Membership has its privileges. Yeah. And not and many. Book, not book as early. many as they used to. <laughs> yeah, not many. And book early, book often. That's right. Just like you vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're very excited. We talked a little bit about this in this week's show, but Disney Springs is really throwing down, uh, really upping their game. Uh, with what they're offering over at all the areas, town center, marketplace, West side. Uh, not only are they doing a uh, great uh, holiday themed entertainment, you can visit Santa, you can visit Santa goofy. Uh, you can uh, see amazing Christmas trees. You can see amazing uh, performances for uh, uh, Kwanzaa and Hanukkah. Uh, there's going to be caroling. There's going to be uh, acoustic groups. There's going to be all sorts of, Awesome entertainment, not to mention the shopping, not to mention the dining at Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. Honestly, at Disney Springs is if you can't get into a park, Disney Springs is the place to be this holiday yeah. season. So definitely enjoy all the holiday extras and just really dig being at, at Disney Springs. It really is a great place to just hang out now. And not that it wasn't before, but it really is now. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh they need a little bit of the local uh, help now uh, from what I hear. So if you are local, that's your chance. Yeah. <laughs> go hang out. Get it while the getting's good, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Until they tell us we can't go there anymore. All right. The number one thing to uh, enjoy at Walt Disney World, and it's the Christmas parade. Now, normally the parade is only limited to – the very Merry Christmas party, but starting Christmas Day, the 25th, running till January 8th, they will run the Christmas parade, I think, at least twice a day, sometimes three times a day. Uh, <clears throat> I think once the crowds kind of, you know, start to build up, I think they just, hey, let's run the parade, uh, you know, because it kind of, you know, recenters everything back in the park. So kind of balances out the loads uh, on the different attractions. So. If you love the Christmas parade and you don't want to buy a Very Merry Christmas Party ticket, well, come on Christmas Day. <laughs> There's nobody there. The uh, views that, and opinions of Tony Casanova do not <laughs> represent those of Park Hopper John nor the Disney Parks podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> Listen, Christmas Day is the busiest day, period, end of story. 
Uh, don't come that. Hey, let me, I'll be the bad guy. Don't come. Do not come. It's miserable, miserable. It's the worst. Usually they reach capacity by 10 AM and that's an hour after park open. So, uh, it's crazy. So, listen. But anyway, the parade will run from uh, December twenty fifth to January. So, if you do want to uh, see the Christmas parade live and in person, uh, that is the best time to see it for free as part of your Magic Kingdom admission. So, absolutely. What we want to know is what do you think are one of the top ten things that you should do at Walt Disney World over the holidays? You can leave us a comment in the show notes in the comment section below this uh, podcast. You can also send us an email at DisneyParksPodcast at gmail.com. You can also leave us a message over on Facebook, facebook.com slash Disney Parks Podcast. And over on the Twitter at twitter.com slash Disney Podcaster. We would love to know. I would love to know what you think. I mean, we, we've we done a couple of these shows over the vast years that we've done this. And we've added some new things, but I would love to know what you guys do. You guys are just as smart, if not smarter than me anyway. Love to know what you guys think. So share your favorite holiday things at Walt Disney World. Yeah, sounds good. Can't wait. All right, that's it, John. Right? Yeah, I got nothing else. Keep listening. All right. That's it, kids. Uh, We'll uh, see you in the parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Fate steps in and sees you through